I love these questions about baptism. Lul uh, Van Voorhis writes, if you were baptized as an infant or by a Catholic church, you should get rebaptized. You need to be at the age of accountability as you are confessing your sins and entering into a lifelong contract, so to speak. You want a clean baptism, full body, unless impossible, and be totally aware of what you are doing. And that is the process that you are born again of spirit, of the spirit, and there should be evidence of this in you and your life and behavior. Although people are different, so you may not see it right away. If you would not let a child enter into a legal contract, you would not expect a kid to be held accountable also as a contract entered in by others for them. Shalom. Lowell, thank you. Uh, thank you for this uh, question, or at least I'm, I'm going to treat it as a question, if that's all right, instead of a comment. Uh, a couple of things to note. You no doubt th know that this is the this is the doctrine of the Anabaptists coming out of the Reformation. That's what Anabaptist means. It means to baptize again. And they argued for the illegitimacy of infant baptism. We've done a little video on infant baptism. I'll put a link up there so you can uh, click on that and, and, and see that as well. But one of the main things uh, that we want to think about, I'm going to take up this argument that you wouldn't let a baby enter into a legal contract and that baptism is, is a legal contract. Now, I'm not sure if it holds, but I'm going to, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to let it hold for a little bit and just, and just suggest a couple of things to you. Uh, the first is that we actually do have legal contracts that, that relate to children, even babies, and especially the legal contract of adoption, where one family becomes the legal guardians of a child. And that adoption is valid for the, for the infant, even though they have no idea what's happening and they're not entering into it willingly. This is why I think that Paul connects baptism to adoption in Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 4. Uh, we are sons of Abraham by faith, because all who have put on Christ, who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, have put on Christ. And then he goes on to talk about how this becoming a son of God or becoming a son of Abraham is a, is a matter of adoption in Galatians uh, chapter 4, verse 4. So that baptism, if you want to think of baptism like a legal contract, we can think of it as a new birth or as adoption. And adoption is valid even if the child does not sign off on it. It reminds us, just as an example, of the covenant that God made with Abraham. Remember, normally the way they would make a covenant, they'd cut two animals in half or animals in half, and then the two people making the covenant would walk through the middle of the animals. And the idea was, hey, if I break this covenant, let me be like these animals that are cut in half. But when God makes his covenant with Abraham, he actually causes Abraham to fall asleep. And he himself walks through the animals, making a promise to be Abraham's God and to give him all of these gifts. Now, would we say well, that that's not a valid contract because Abraham was asleep? Well, in fact, the Lord put him to sleep to, to emphasize the fact that the, the contract of the gospel is a one-sided contract. God is the one who's doing it. Now, this, this takes us right to one of the key texts about baptism, which is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. I'd like you to consider this. It's talking about husbands and wives and talks about how husbands should treat their wives like Christ treats the church, who, who it says in verse 24, who washed her with the washing of the water and the word to present her to himself a pure church, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. So that in baptism, the Lord washes us with the water and the word so that he might present us to himself as glorious, as pure, as forgiven. Baptism doesn't make us beautiful people. It makes us forgiven people. That means beautiful in the sight of God. So can God do that? Can he make a contract with a person who can't give anything back? Well, in fact, that's what salvation is. That's why Jesus says, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, you must become as like one of these little children. And remember, they were the children that, that were being carried to Jesus. They couldn't even, they couldn't bring themselves to Jesus. They were being carried to Jesus. And Jesus says, you have to be like this. In other words, you have to recognize that salvation is not a two-way street. Salvation is not a contract that we make with God, but rather it's a contract, it's a promise that he gives to us, that he delivers to us. And baptism delivers that promise. So, can children enter into a contract to start a business or to, to, to buy a piece of property or go to war? No, they can't do that. But can children receive the gift of adoption? Can children be the benefits of legal contracts? Can, can children receive gifts? Yeah. 
And it's really all they're good for. <laughs> but when we become children of God, this is, what, this is what we're saying, is that we're standing as the recipients of his gifts. So I, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I, I really appreciate the, uh, the, the comment, and I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on, on these verses as well, especially in regards to baptism being the contract of adoption. Thanks. God's peace be with you.